Um, I have quite a, an amazing story to tell. It was 25 years in the making. I always wanted to be an astronomer as far back as I could remember. And basically that story, which one would think would be the major story of my life, was, you know, when I did a lot of studying, a lot of hard work to get into the position that I was at JBL and have those kinds of opportunities. The other picture represents a story that was even much longer in the making. And it is the same characteristics, I think, that allowed me to solve the mystery on Io. Uh. And to not give up until I understood it was also, there was another mystery in my life. And this was a good time to write this book because that mystery was recently solved. It took eight solid years of research to figure out what had happened to me as a very young child. Uh. And this book is is indeed in part about uh, a huge mystery. Beautiful. I could never have guessed that it would involve so many other people that this mystery did, and um, I would also never have imagined that in my life as a scientist that I would end up, you know, championing the causes of, you know, reigning in child abuse. And, uh, I, and also, also. And that's, you describe that in this book? Yes. Ah, beautiful. And, and where I... The effect on childhood. Precisely. Okay. And it seems like everywhere I speak about the book, there's at least, in the audience, at least one person who comes up to me afterward who's themselves, they themselves, or a family member has needed the type of help I eventually beautiful, had to get. Beautiful. And so, yes. So there, there's certainly that aspect to the book, an beautiful. amazing mystery there as well. So there's many reasons to read this book. Well, there is as well, and interestingly enough, they really are all in this cover. And if you look very, very, very closely, in that is um, that is a Christian cross. Uh. And if it, it's there, it's there, but it's hard to see. And it's actually made up of galaxy images from the, the Hubble spacecraft. And so, yes, indeed. You mean and that's that's a real? That's the, this is real data from Hubble, and. Um, it, it reminds me very much of something I saw as a child. And the answer to your original question is yes. A, a Christian can be a scientist, a true Christian, and a true scientist at the same time. Uh -huh. And a scientist can be a Christian. And you have certainly looked at the scientific field and understand the, the everything that, that people are talking about that leads into the question of, what happened before the Big Bang? Mm -hmm. Who came up with the laws of physics? Right. And your answer would be? Well, um, my answer would be that um, indeed we are on a quest in science. We are on a quest to try to unify the physics so that we can understand how this universe actually began. Yes. And my feeling is that as a Christian that God created a glorious universe for us, but it was one that was mature and had a history and had these wonderful mysteries to solve. Uh. And that is the work of science, also created by God. And so yes, nowadays one of the most exciting, exciting things that takes place is that the scientists who understand Einstein's laws and the scientists who under, on a large scale, gravity affects the universe when there are large masses, planets, stars, galaxies and clusters of galaxies, gravity comes into play and Einstein with his general relativity has helped us understand that. But then there are people on the quantum level, the, the physics of the very small atoms and that sort of thing that really need to come together, the quantum, the, the small scale and the large scale so that we can better understand the and, physics that were at play at the And we really the don't know very much about quantum mechanics. Not enough, and certainly not yet enough with the, with the unifying theories that are out there, the string theories and, and um, there, there are the, the cyclic universe and, and, and the brain theory and the membranes. We're, we're close, but we're not yet there. So would you conclude that God probably had something to do with the development of the laws of physics? I would say that everything in this universe that we see was created by God. 
and that science is the tool that we use to one way interpret that. And the knowledge that we gain, the knowledge that we gain is powerful. It affects our future. The knowledge that we gain in asteroid research helps us plan for the day when that one asteroid is, that near Earth object is headed toward the Earth and isn't going to miss us by a small amount. It's essential to our survival that we use the gifts that God has given oh. us. And indeed, that is where research comes in, and scientific research, medical research, all of these things that improve the human condition. And indeed, they're related, because the science and the, the cameras on, on spacecraft are used in medical technology. And those, all the digital imaging that is in, used in diagnostic procedures was first on a NASA spacecraft, first on a NASA spacecraft camera, mm -hmm. a charge couple device. Now everybody has them. They've revolutionized the way that we can diagnose and in many cases treat. And this all comes out from the advancement and pushing exploration and wanting to know and wanting to make scientific discoveries. Are you looking forward to the future Mars ex uh, exploratory shot, which I, is coming up really quick, isn't it? On Saturday. Wow. Launch will be Saturday. Saturday. Well, potentially. They have a window opening up Saturday morning, and that will be most exciting. We're going back to Mars. We're going back to Mars with a rover that can do things that have never been done like before. Like what? Okay. It can... Um, it can fire a laser, and it can basically um, create a gas that, that is vaporizing the material on the outside of a rock. It can do that from about 60 feet away, and then it can interpret what, what the molecular the composition is, even from that distance. It can scoop up soil. It can drill into rocks. It can transport that material into places where it will be sorted inside the rover by size, and the search is on for organics, organic material. Uh, and it is, it, indeed, it is not life that we're looking for. We're just looking for the ingredients that would have to be there for life as we know it, if it should it exist, still exist on Mars, in terms of cellular life or something else that might have survived. When we sent a spacecraft there, the Viking spacecraft tested for life. And it came up and said, absolutely no, no life. But since that time, the Mars Polar Lander landed very close to one of the poles of Mars, and it discovered the most amazing thing in the soil. It discovered something called um, per perchlorites. And those- Perchlorites? Per they're perchlorates. Perchlorates. Correct. Okay. And they destroy organic, they, they, they actually, will eliminate organic material by ionizing them mm. and reacting chemically with them. Mm. And so now we know that Voyager, that Viking way back then, probably did detect organics on Mars. Those organics mean uh, materials that contain carbon and hydrogen. And these are things that we feel are necessary to sustain life. Mm. And so now that that mystery might be solved, if we'd known this years ago, the whole entire Mars exploration program might have been different. Mm. But now that we know it now, we are, we are testing this theory that if that ingredient is present in the soil and it does a certain thing, then we can pick up on that and eliminate the fact that we, maybe, maybe there is organics in the surface of Mars. And we're going to an amazing area called Gale Crater. And it is basically at a very low elevation and water flows downward. And if there wasn't a lake on Mars there, there ev at one time, there isn't a lake anywhere, probably. But this is what we have to test for. And it looks like it's got sedimentary layers. It's got a four-mile-high mountain in the center. And the layers there appear to be these clays that form in the presence of water. So we are sending a rover directly there on the most unique, amazing uh, device. It will actually be craned with a jet powered, it's too big, it's too heavy, it's too ton, it's 2,000 pounds, it's a ton, to use those, those airbags where it would bounce to the surface. Uh -huh. so it, it will be tethered to the surface by a powered rocket that will basically then put it on the surface 
kind of fire its rockets and try to get far enough away from it not to hurt it 